Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to our webinar, Considerations for Building a Successful Staircase with Duo Dickinson. I'd like to introduce our presenter for this evening. Uh, many uh, he, He's presented for us before, which uh, we're, we're happy to have him back, uh, Duo Dickinson. Uh, Duo started making things uh, back in the late 70s, apprenticing at millwork shops and architecture and architectural office and he had his own architectural practice for over 30 years and has built almost 900 things throughout his career he has written eight books including the house you build and is a staff writer for several web and print publications including hearst uh, again i'd also like to thank uh, feeney for being tonight's sponsor uh, feeney manufactures a wide range of architectural products including their stainless cable rail kits and complete stair and deck railing systems and you can find out more about them at feeney.com um, and uh, i'm not going to waste too much of, more of your time because i know do has a big presentation for you so uh enjoy the show well thanks a lot for having me this is the second uh presentation on stairs but this is not the same presentation it's totally different and it involves one of the most amazing things I think that you can do as somebody that works on buildings in general, but also just the homes in particular. And the points I'll go over with you have to do with some seminal basic points of opportunity, but also terror, which are some of the code issues and some of the craft issues, some of the aesthetic issues, but the basic ways that, stair, that stairs really manifest so many things that in a, in a home. It, we'll be talking about graspable railings and barriers. We'll be talking about open and closed stringers and risers. We'll talk about materials. We'll talk about lighting and ventilation, which many people don't associate with stairs, but they really are exquisitely important in lighting and ventilating a house, natural use of the environment to bring it into the house. And cost choices, what costs money, what does not. And lastly, I'll show you some interesting features that I've used stairs for over the years and i think i think that uh is a way to take stairs beyond their raw functionality and what i'm gonna shock you with is not anything i did but a great a really truly great architect in california mark silva and i saw a stair that he did last week and the, the stair was done i think several years ago but the stair was so um embodied so many different things about what stairs can be for anyone that I thought this would be a great thing to show you. And here's the finished product. And you can see it uses things that I'm not going to talk about in the slideshow, which is micro lambs, plate glass, incredibly beautiful thick slabs of wood, uh, and making the stair literally a sculpture that, that filters and distributes light and focuses you on another sculpture, which is on the wall. But it's also really an incredible artful combination of wood, steel, and glass. And that combination involves these metal metal registration brackets that end up holding the treads up and the treads in turn hold glass up and the glass in turn holds the railing up. And that incredible kind of synthesis of many different pieces and materials, I find it to be incredibly beautiful. And, they, and Mark uses gaps to make things work. So you look at the right hand side of the slide, there's a gap between the, the CMU wall and the, this, the actual platform. And if you look up top, you'll see beautifully cast the top left, a beautifully cast concrete floor that actually is cast to the exact same dimension and profile as a tread and actually becomes this little pseudopod of concrete that comes out and, and accepts you as you come up. And What's, what's great about what Mark sent me was the fact that you can actually see how it's made. And you can see the different pieces they use because in a central stringer stair and under, underpin central stringer, you know, tip, tipping one way or another is a bad idea. So using two makes for stability and making sure things are set up right. This is what the shop did. You can see the incredible joinery that of the, of the steel to the, of the actually see all the, it was said to be bronze, but I can't really tell what, what it is now, but you can actually see the different points of registration and angles that these little brackets extend out and support the stairs. And then you can see the treads going in. You can see them actually installing everything and finishing it. And you see the original drawing where the, if you go back, if you take a look uh, to the lower left, you'll see there are two brackets out of the platform. And if you take a look at, at the way it was originally thought of, well, maybe the platform would sit on one and be, be supported by the 
the, the bracket. Well, no, that didn't happen. And, and what makes anything wonderful is the evolution of the idea into what actually gets built. And of course, in stairs, they've got to be structural, they've got to be code compliant, and they've, they've got to do all these things. And if you're Mark Silva, they've got to be beautiful and they have to be art. But the vast majority of stairs done everywhere, the vast majority are the simple stock stair solutions that you see all around you where, where, where really standard pieces and parts are put together in a way which meets the code, is safe, and there's nothing wrong with it. It just isn't as expressive or distilled. So if you take a look at the left, this, that's in a condo. I'll show you more pictures of what we did to that. And, and on the right is a house where a stair was added into an older home and it, it really didn't fit the home at all, but it was it functioned, it was, it was fine. But those two worlds, the super high custom world of, of Mark Silva and the everyday, let's solve the problem with a kit of parts, both of those worlds, which are, which are antithetical to each other in an aesthetic sense, all have to work with the building code. And the building code you know, is extremely explicit about rises and runs of treads and what you can do with nosings, your he the headroom you use, the, the nature of the way you actually use the, the, the stair path itself of the width of it, either by overall or encumbrance of the things that project into it, the actual heights of the railings, the, the, the heights of the barriers that are used to protect you from falling over the stair, the nature of the handrail in terms of how it, it should be attached to the wall or how far it extends. There's a thousand and one rules that are applicable that code officials either apply or they give you some latitude depending on what you do, depending on the code official. So, you know, obviously you've got to have the right graspable railing because there, there are minimums and, and maximums of these um, pieces because people's hands have to be able to grasp them. So, Designers do take great care to do this, but they also need to, I find I need to talk to the local code official before you build anything and say, I'd like to do this. We think it meets the code. What do you think? And the things you'll be seeing, virtually every single one of them were run by the code official. And there were some things they changed. And when we got them to a stair manufacturer who did shop drawings, they would change things too. So there are layers of application of both craft, the craftsman changed things, the code, the, the, the safety, the, the legality of things, and also the fabrication of things. The actual person that makes it wants to do things certain ways. And sometimes that's a really good idea. Sometimes it, it makes you a little bit nervous, but still the, the end result is something that I think is, could be exquisitely beautiful. And it, cause, cause stairs really are the most essential, crafty, costly, um, part of a home that is universal and used all the time. So it's high focus, high cost, and high use. So you see it a lot, you use it all the time, and it's got to be safe and maybe beautiful. So this is that house that we I talked about before. And this is this is about closed stringers and open risers. So what you've got is, this is the stair we found. It was facing the wrong way from the entry. It shut off light. It, it did very strange things. If you look at, up at the top, you'll see it, the stairwell did the typical things where the wall got too tall. It does a little dance around the wall just to be code compliant. And the, if you look at the far left, you'll see just there's the remnant of the barrier rail on the left. We just took it out. But what we had and what, what really was, a, that's, was the essence of this was we had the exact same opening that the stairs they had there. We couldn't afford to widen the opening or change the opening. These new stairs go into that exact same opening. So in making that work, we had to think about the systems we used. We had to think about the nature of the, of the construction. And we had to make sure that everything met the, the barrier thing of no more than four inches and we also uh, of, of a gap. And we also had to run it by the building inspector who let us have a little bit of, of, a, of a gap in that gap at the lower right. So it's a little bit bigger because there was a floor going beyond it. And he said, that's, that's, safe. that's safe for me. But otherwise everything is in, the, is in four inches or less gap to work things in. And we, you can see that these are all open 
treads, those risers. So we had to put a stainless steel rod through to, to get that barrier set up. And of course, everything had to be mapped out on paper before we did it. And, and we drew every single aspect of this and, and there were columns that were intervening. And I like to sort of not touch columns. I like that it looks nicer if they are gapped. So we did that, we gapped it and we, we tried to use ethically these, these vertical steel stanchions with the, with, the, with the braided stainless steel cable. And, and also that system of essentially making two uh, sets of closed stringers as a gangplank in a way, that, that creates the top and bottom details that are terrific. And you can take a look right there's that detail. We're bolting the side of this into the, into the floor framing. You can see that because of, of, of dimensional issues, we actually had to put the verticals inside the closed stringer and it still met the code for width, available width, both maximum and encumbrance of those railings. And you could see that because this is at a focal part point of the house where we opened up to the existing windows, you can actually see the use of the open uh, riser as a way to visually connect, but also share light. And, and you can see here that those elements of, of angled, straight, and linear have, make a little dance. And the thing that makes this stair most amazing to me is that Keith Knickerbocker, an incredible builder here in Connecticut, actually took our drawings bit it out, thought about it. And he said, you know what? I'll make this myself. And he did in the field, including those amazing turns you see the, at, the, at the left, they were carved as single pieces. And he worked with me and, and with his steel person. And we made all of these connections in the various places. If you look to the lower left, you'll see those connections weren't done. We decided that they were, were just not as elegant as what we did at the bottom of those stairs. So you can see at the bottom, everything has that half round end to the closed stringer. So this is the, the stair that served that to block all the spaces from each other in the house. And when we revise the stair, it now connects everything to the house. So you can actually see that what was a wall now becomes almost a lens and you can see everything from everywhere. And, and yet at the same time, it's exquisitely safe. And this shot was taken four years ago and this shot was taken two weeks ago. And you can see that the stair is four years old, has had four years of use. And especially in COVID, that's a lot of use because everybody's home all the time. And a, a stair that's made of solid things in simple ways actually holds up really well. Now, the, the major difference in, in I find in thinking about how stairs can work is to define what's a graspable rail, what you have to hang on to, and what's a barrier that you don't want to fall over and kill yourself. So on the last stair you saw, there were essentially two graspable rails, one on either side. I could have made them different, but they really shouldn't have been. They really need to be the same thing. You see them from two sides. But here are several examples where we actually, um, where we actually make something which I think uh, emphasizes the distinction between the graspable and the, and the barrier aspects. This is a house that we did uh, about 12, 15 years ago in, in Connecticut. And it was, had to be done totally from the time we started, the time we finished in a year and had to be exactly on budget. And so it was, it, we, we did it with a great, another great builder, Matt Fogarty. But um, what was fun was to make a stair that was affordable, but also was expressive and also could be done basically in the field. I mean, with, with, a, sand, with a set of just box uh, steps with it, just as you drop in. So if you take a look at the center of this plan, the bottom two treads are custom, everything else is super stock and they loved birch. So the floor itself is all birch and the stairs are all birch. And you can see there's a sheetrock wall and we put the graspable rail on the sheetrock wall. On the left, We've got the barrier wall and because it's just a wall we could afford to give a little curve like we did in the front just to sort of enliven the stair and that mimics the treads which are also pointing you in diagonally into the house and so that that dynamic of the curves in a dance and the wall having its its own curve makes these things visible makes the visibility of this thing a feature not an apology it really feels like a design element in the room and it also responds to the code. It actually says I can hold the railing to the right and go up, 
and use the part of the code that says you don't have to have the railing go all the way to the end. That was back in the day. Now, many officials say you've got to take it all the end and even beyond the end of the stair. And that's why it gets good to talk to people. You see the stair going upstairs beyond that, going up with that curve. So you get a sense of what's, of what's going on, just taking a look at this photograph. And as you walk in, the stair turns you to the light and to the living room, which is around the corner. Now, the next one I'm going to show you is, is more involved. This is a, a house that we did about four years ago, in, in actually in Greenwich, Connecticut. And cost was a real issue, and it was on a very tight site. And we really had to maximize the cubage of the house because they had they have three three beautiful little girls, and they were going to grow up here. So this is a house that's around 3,000 square feet total, actually above ground, about 2,700 square feet. So it's not a big mansion. It's not a huge house. And the way we did that was we made a four-level house. In doing that, we had to make the stairs work. So if you look at the front and you see that cascading shape that, that, that is the antithesis of the, of the wall that you see from the street, but it's actually a, a shape, entry shape, lower right, house shape, upper left, or, or all left, this, the stairs actually forms that shape. So we use that shape to make the stair work dimensionally. So you can see all four levels here, the lower levels going down to the basement, and you can see it looking at it from the front, you can actually see the way we played with the different railings, and you'll see what this means. So as you walk in, here's the stair going up. And by the way, many comments on the rug. This did not have a rug for four years. The owner found a rug that they loved, and we put it in. I think it works well. Some people love it. Some people hate it. But rugs are the things you could use in stairs to make them quieter, to make them in a way safer if they're well, well installed because there's, no, there's less tripping, there's more gripping, and much nicer for kids because they can lie on them and, and use them. And you can see that you know, we try to incorporate curves to make these things softer, and we were able to do that with a handrail for sure, but we cut costs by, by making the, the curving trim uh, underneath the stair become an angle. And it actually was fine because the way we make this, this stair rail work and actually keep its, its dimension as a graspable rail as, as you're going up here is that we actually pull it inside the wall. You see the wall, the very far upper right. Well, we then end up making, in effect, these little shelves, which are the, just, the, just the stair treads, which the cat loves, by the way. And it actually makes the line and the curve and the steps I think part of an art form, basically. And you can see this is pretty much what we drew. And you could see that it actually, you know, addresses the front door. That light curve again brings you in and meets all the dimensional codes of what that is. And you can see how this, this ascending stair allows for light to come in from the outside of the house to the left and also arrives the top. And because it was so tight, we had to do some intermediary steps. And you can see the lower railing extends the rail into the platform. The left rail is the barrier rail, which is a little bit taller. And we had originally said, oh, of course, we'll have newels and we'll let this, uh, we'll let this column float. No, we really did have to end the railings and newels to save money. So you can see there's the, there's the grass bubble part of the railing to the, to the right. And there's the, um, there's the barrier rail to the left. And you can see when that pulls back, we start the new run of stairs going up to the left. And you could begin to see how they work together as a scissors. And because we're right maxed out with the height, we had to make the stair do a little step. And you can see there, it even says glass panel. That was a budget cut. You'll see what happens with that. But you can get a sense that we use that diamond window as, a, as an ornament a feature to the house from the street, but it also brings light in again. And there's a gap in the stairs. So you can see the barrier part, lower right, the grass bowl part, upper left, and it ends up taking you up. And it takes you up to this uh, home office, but there's a really fun thing here. And I discovered, I remember, remembered this only today, which was we had to save money to make this house work. Upper left is the drawing where there's a newel, the, a newel that would stop the railing from going to the wall. And the handrail did this nice little swoop to get to the newel. And we had those, that, those windows there. So the windows are gone, the newel is gone. And what we found out we could do is we could still have fun with the art of this by taking the handrail and bringing it down and marrying it to the trim. Because if you take a look at the lower left, it actually now dies into the trim below uh, the, the floor and actually makes kind of an interesting sort of composition. And we had fun also with the baseboard making it follow those same reciprocal curves. But the thing which happens in something like this is stuff happens, right? 
So you, if you take a look at the, the railing we had, it was going to be inset more. The, the stair itself would be inset more and it would go straight up. Well, to save money, they made all the stairs the same. That meant that the stair that you see in the lower right actually went out further. And to get this handrail around the wall, they did that do -si do And you could actually see that do -si do there. And, and you could see to the left of that little do -si do where it's going up outside. And then the railing that goes along the wall goes out from that with a little curve in it. That saved them a fair amount of money, even though there was a, some stock curves in that little do -si do and you could see at the, the left, you could actually see where we terminated that, that rail that was gonna have a curve in it as a straight line directly keyed to the trim. Well, another house we just are finishing up now, and I took these shots last Friday, last, yeah, Saturday, um, is had, had a similar central stair that was the sort of denominator of the house. And we had a great entry and we had this one run stair that goes up to a balcony, a different sort of situation, a double height entry, which I think is pretty fun. And again, we use curves to kind of make the stair mesh with the wall. And we, again, we figured out every aspect of the stair before we made it. This had a full set of shop drawings and I didn't have any time to copy them, but they pretty much worked right with us to try to get all this to happen for the money that was there. So the way this works is you, this house, has this incredibly focal entry and you come in and see through to the water and the newel is set so that it says the stairs here. You can see over it, but it projects itself into uh, the space and the stairs in themselves actually cascade out and the stair rail, the graspable rail turns the corner and the quote of just said, that's, that's safe enough for me. You got the, you have the newel on the left and you've got the graspable rail on the right. That works for me. Now, not every, not every code official I know would say that. They might want to actually have the graspable rail on the left. We really wanted to do it on the right so we could have this, this grand gesture of the sweeping, heightening railing that actually makes it, I think, part of the overall sense of the house with the curves that are in the ceiling uh, uh, aspects, the beam, the drop beam aspects. And it, but the stair itself is just simple, straight run going down. You can see that there's the plan, there's the, there's the stair from above. And from the living room, you look back and there's a swoop emerging from the arch. And you also see those little oak um, stalactites up at the top that come down from the railing up above. And they do mesh with the entry and they do actually intentionally um, follow the patterns that you see all laid out, all approved by the code official before they even saw it. And there's the owner and there's that, that's, that, there's that balcony rail, which again uses the same type of newel that you see down below and and it uses again a newel that avoids the wall so that it's, it keeps its identity as essentially a separate millwork piece but again you know the the the, the builder ha has their concerns so if you take a look upper left we you, you didn't have to do this amazing uh, amazing gooseneck to make this thing come in and go over and back by code the sort of fish said the, the railing of the rights left is actually perfectly adequate and you have the newel de graphs to go up those other two steps but the stair person said no, i really want this so they made that amazing gooseneck even though it wasn't required and you could get the sense obliquely that you wander you you come in and you see this amazing swoop if you look lower left we added these little these little cap pieces all white oak and you get a sense that's all done with a table saw to save money so it's done simply with a table saw and a big piece of oak and i think they look terrific now, th that's the graspable rail, barrier rail combination. The other thing which you have to worry about continually in, in all of these steps is this four inch rule that you don't wanna have a child's head to go through between the spindles or the newel and something that you've gotta have a barrier that will not allow for anything wider than four inches to, to, to go through. Well, when we came into a house here in Madison, they had of course an old stair, which had like, eight inch openings between these things. They were all just pieces of red oak screwed to the outside of everything. Super simple and pretty uncomfortable and pretty dangerous. So that stair went away and this balcony went away. And so what we did was we, we changed the balcony, but we also made a new stair. And the stair basically is really to me an example of how you can make a closed stringer stair, which saves a little bit of money use curves cut into flat things, which, which is not as expensive as curving, actually curving things, and use, again, table saw cut 
newels to give shape that is actually affordable rather than turning it or even carving. So this simple stair bottom, which turns out, doesn't even try to use the side because the truth is uh, the, the owners, I think, uh, would be uncomfortable turning that corner. So what we do is, is, is we didn't want to put a railing in front of the window. We had to, by the way, because the window was what it was, we had to get tempered glass for that window and the code official allowed it, even though there is a code provision that says that that's not acceptable in existing conditions, you can. So we, we did this and you can get a sense that we then made the trim by the stair person. That stair person actually made that beautiful curve that unifies things. And we also had a lot of fun making these newels get no farther apart at the right height than four inches apart and have this light expressive shape and capital. And you can see how they actually run down the face and become a sort of a third reality from the walls and the stairs. They become sculptures, they become expressive pieces of craft. And again, that this idiosyncrasy that I like, that I have, I guess, of expressing the newels down below and then making this, this um, I think, expressive thing that you see from the living room down below. So, so that all this activity is not lost, you actually do see it. And you can get a sense of how progressive it is and how nice it is as it goes down. And there's, there's the shop drawing, there's the shop drawing, and it's very similar to what we did. And here's what we made. And you get a sense that every piece was thought about. Now, there are so many code issues in this that you, know, you can say you know them, but the truth is sometimes you have to interpret them because the conditions aren't always there. And sometimes builders interpret them. And even though you draw something, something else gets made. And so what ends up happening is if you know the code well enough, you can actually adapt to it. Well, here is a really terrible situation where we came into a house with a stair like that, no railings at all, going the wrong way in front of the front door and was unbelievably dangerous and strange and invaded the space. There was a column there that we got rid of but that has nothing to do with stairs. But what we ended up doing was we ended up taking the stringers of that stair and using those stringers as art in effect on the outside of the wall we made so that you could actually have a stair going up but actually have some storage underneath the stair. What we did was we reused all the parts of the stair. So all the original stair stringers are behind that wall. And we got old wood uh, slabs to the, to the right, which are basically the same species, but they, and they're just clear coated, but they're old. And there's some sympathy. So you need to see what we did. We thought we could either put the stringers on the inside or the outside, but we put them on the outside. You need to see that all the pieces and parts are together. We didn't do the door that you see there because we kept the closet from the other side. And you just get a sense how simple the stair is. Steps going up to a platform and going up. And then the graspable rail runs all the way down around the perimeter. And we show it returning to the wall. But interestingly enough, the building officials said, you don't have to return to the wall there. No one's walking by that. It's fine. So we didn't return it to the wall. But we returned it to the top because it was, it was a place where you'd be coming across it. And you give me a sense that we use bronze railing uh, from, a, from a manufacturer because they're standard pieces and parts of stairs, which... If you know where they are and, and use them, they could become unbelievably beneficial when you combine them with custom craft. And from another place in the house, we had that carved pineapple and the newel, and that made things nice. The owner's brother was a metal worker, so we thought that they would make a bunch of metal parts like, like the verticals that you see on the, on the left and that cap piece of steel. But it turned out he said, nah, I don't want to do it. But anyway, they did it. These are the old treads, the original stair. The new wall that's coming down that again uses old wood. But to make it to make the width work, we actually used an acceptable gap to the sidewall, worked out with the code official, where we have a little steel angle that in effect holds the tread up and allows the old treads to be used at the appropriate width. And so there's the stair from the top with, with the, the barrier to the right, the steel cap on top of the wood wall, and the bronze railing that wraps around. Now, the second stair in the house was a disaster. It had two or three different riser heights it was just horrific and it had no barriers at all. It had some, some logs basically that it were cleft and, and used as barriers, but nothing to hold on to. So to make something to be held onto that, that basically meets code, I again proposed something to the code official and he sort of thought it was a good idea that I did a curving railing that actually adjusted itself to the conditions where the lower stair goes beyond the upper stair uh, in, and cuts into the floor. The top, top tread, if you look at the right, is like three inches high, and the other treads are anywhere from seven to, to eight inches high. They're all incredibly variable. So we didn't change that. We added those the, the, the newels that you see here, and basically 
we effectively added a new piece to this existing masonry stair, carried that barrier across the right, kept the old logs that were there, but added um, the, the, the steel turnbuckle rods that actually make the barrier. Well, sometimes you do things and you spec them and the builder says, no, I don't need to do that because I've, I've done this a different way. And you warn him and you see what happens. And sometimes the coder says, nah, you're really gonna have to do this right. So as you see here, this is just, just an entry. It's a lovely entry to a little building that we were part of 20 years ago. The new owners had us come in and make this entry, make, make this roof and make this coverage to the stairs that go down to the, to, to the garage. And it's lovely. It's all done with table saws and half laps and, and, and a couple different things, which I think the readers of Fine Home Building would love to know about. But it's a great way to make a very thin, expressive roof. And you can see how that, that's quite lovely. And oh boy, isn't this wonderful. And there it is. Well, they had done uh, the, the railings on either side. We'd shown walls with a railing on the inside. And they had just done the, the two railings to the side. Because we do these all the time. It's really simple. They don't thought they were better. And that was great. But, but when, they, when the, when the, when the uh, code official goes up, he says, yeah, there's no graspable rail on this. So we added that graspable rail. When he goes on the other set of steps, here they are framed up. There's no graspable rail there. Well, we called one out. But there it is now. So that evolution of design, fabrication, code review, or CFO, that makes for some pretty fun things in construction. So that's on the sort of construction side. Now, what I'm going to do, because it is 6.33, I've done this for half an hour, I want to get done on time, uh, is that, is that um, I want to show you the features that stairs uniquely can provide, in a, and especially in a home, but anywhere, but really in a home. So. What you see is, is this um, the standard stair that I showed you before. And this standard stair ends up um, being made of super stock parts in a, in a very nice condominium in Westchester County, New York. In between the two sets of steps is, 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 about, a, is about a two inch gap. And that's just the way it works. All standard half run box stairs that you'd buy anywhere. And I said to the owner, who's a wonderful person, I said to the owner, I said, you know, I have an idea that you could take the light that does come in at the very top and has nowhere else except the very top and you could bring it down. And the idea was pretty simple that we would use stainless steel one by ones and have them essentially be the barrier all the way from top to bottom from the, from the, from the, the bottom run of stairs and then go all the way up, up into the fourth level uh, open space at the window. And you'd make, and you do this really careful stainless steel sinuous uh, wrap around graspable rail around the barrier rail. So, and that met code and was great. And it ends up with a wonderful piece of English brown oak at the top. And you can see the light hits it, the light comes down and it transforms a really standard builder's stair into something I think is quite lovely. Now, another way you could bring light into a building is, is to basically use skylights. And in a, this building, which is in California, the, the actual building is, is at four little buildings. There's a guest suite, there's a guest house down below. There's a, a living house that you see here. There's like a social place on the other side and there's an office up top. And the stair connects like most good stairs do. They connect all those parts. So they go to the outside wall, but you can be, get a sense that they're in the middle of all this stuff that's going on. And if you take a look at the upper left, you can actually see all these skylights coming down and bathing this place with light. But more than that, what we also did was we actually used floor glass to actually get more light down into the, the space next to it. But you can get a sense that we tried to make the newels be sculptural. We tried to make the stair rail be, be, and trim to be sinuous. And I think we succeeded. In other words, what, but the biggest aspect of this stair was it took that skylight light and it, it blasted it down through and also down through the, the balcony floor that you see here, all the way down through the house and took the light from the second stair that goes up to the office from, from a, an, a, in effect, a, a little tower and brings that light down too. So the light comes all around you in the stair. A project I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on is, is not done, but it shows what a renovation do. You know, new houses are one thing. You can, you can really control everything in a new house. And if the stair doesn't work so well, you know, shame on me. But occasionally you, you end up with, a, with a, an existing home. And like that very first project you saw, 
there, there was an existing stair opening. And again, just like that first project you saw, the stair was exactly wrong. The stair was turned the wrong way, faced the wrong way, emptied the wrong way, and was kind of mean and simple and not great. Just like the house, the existing house is on the, on the left of, the, of these drawings. And what we did to it's on the right. So we basically kept the roof planes that were there, but at, but extended one so you could actually have headroom on the on the on the third floor because you'd walk up and this normal set of steps and smash your head at a ceiling that was about five feet eleven, no joke, as you got to the top of the stairs. So we sort of undid that with that roof you see there, but we also undid that at the top of the stairs. We made this dormer that you see in the lower right. So we completely transformed this into this. So that you really get a sense that the that the stair itself, the, those stack three windows and the roof, that's that's the oculus. That is the the light scoop that actually takes the light and blasts it through the building, and and it the form of it I think justifies it. And you could see in the drawings which you did, which had to be incredibly careful. And there's a little story behind what's going to happen here too, is that um, we had to make parts that were barriers parts that were just um parts that were just handrails because the ins and outs of what was existing because all the, the the floor around it was pretty much existing when, when we did this stair we opened it up some but we we made this essentially this two-story event because the survey in the basement is just a, the most basic uh simple uh access stair we had to make it work with the columns that were necessary so they're going to be simple tapered oak columns and we had to make it be its own thing because it is standing in the middle of an open floor. So the way we did that was we bared the existing uh, fireplace that, that you could see in, uh, on the left and bared the chimney, which you could see in the very center and opened that up completely and let the stair effectively go around that. So in doing that, we had some holes. So there's light coming down through and going through holes in the floor that are actually, if you take a look at the floor plans, there's the flue in the middle floor plan and the two words open are there. That's that open space that goes through. So we have, we have an open straight run stair that goes around to a, to, to a, to a corridor around the uh, chimney. So we actually use the existing house as essentially ornament and, and take this incredibly tight stair. Again, I mean, it's exactly three feet, it works. And we use the type of railings that are, that are mounted to the outside and also to the wall to make both a barrier rail on one side and a graspable rail on the other. And by making the barrier be, be these braided wires, they end up going across the, uh, the lower part of the chimney and they stop on either side of the upper part of the chimney. So it becomes, again, a thing that venerates and celebrates this masonry mass. And into the project, they decided they would really love, or we decided to really love a wonderful quarter sawn cherry kitchen of vertical boards. And that will be a major element in a very open floor plan. We, and I said, well, you know, if you're going to be spending all this money on this wonderful stair, you should have a bit of dialogue between that stair and these cabinets. And since they're next to each other, so this whole side of the stair will be made out of those same cherry boards. And they will also have these oak uh, columns that you see it, it, around this existing fireplace. And the biggest problem was headroom. And the red line that you see there was incredibly important that we actually have headroom because we had to impose a new steel beam. We had an existing opening. But we also had, we wanted to get space between the stair and this window wall that we created. So we were making this stair sit behind this glass. If you take a look to the right, you'll see little sections and the left actually, you see the little sections where the balcony has got, again, a railing on it, but it, it, it essentially allows the light to come completely through and penetrate through. And there's the masonry mass running through, and you you end up you end up making this light filled space. Now I'm going to go back here to show you. Well, this is a good enough view. So they haven't made these stairs yet, and they had bid it out to two stair companies, and it is a building boom. <laughs> so the guys just stopped showing up after a while. There's no lack of money, and there's no they just said uh, yeah whatever, and they just left. So the builder, another great builder. Sean Portley is actually going to make the stair <laughs> with the parts. And I've gotten a wonderful fabricate, uh, this, uh, millwork guy who's making the kitchen to make these two uh, stringers that you see in the middle of the right hand side. He'll cut it to the curve and he'll make the trim that's on the other side to the curve. So, so we work together in some of these scenarios to 
build around the existing conditions so that it works and it adapts to the existing conditions. So one of the last things I'm gonna show you is, is actually the use of stairs as a venting tower and also as a light feature. So if you take a look, stairs are the one thing that goes between all the floors in a, in, in a, in a building. They, they, they go between the floors. And when they go between the floors, they're able to link all the parts of the building visually, but also I think light and all from the sky and also air from the outside world in so that warm air rises and breezes flow. So if you could actually use a stair to effectively vent a house, it needs less air conditioning and it, it actually makes for a nicer feel. This house on the other side of this rise faces directly over the water and is relatively narrow and has enormous wind and light coming from the south in the water. So in order to backlight those spaces and in order to actually take that wind and have a, give it a place to go with these operable windows you see up and down the stairs to actually increase the natural ventilation of the house, we designed a stair that went up the three levels and was gapped. You can see the gap in the middle plan top. There's, there's essentially a gap that goes all the way up through the house and the windows are corner windows so they could both be open and, and light and air just flows through it. And you can see that we sort of nestled this stair in this stair uh, shape, this tower shape that we made and had windows at every corner so that you would never be facing a blank wall, but also left a lot of room for art. So this becomes this, this vertical sequence in an otherwise layer cake house of, of three floors that essentially are defined because of the height limitation of the house. So, so that, that wonderful counterpoint um, between um, the, aspiration of the stair and the, and the stoic uh, layers of the floor and this space for light and air to flow through, I think make for a terrific event. And you begin to see the way the light plays off and we curve the underside of the stairs just with sheetrock because behind that are little steel stringers. And we just made this thing that I think is its own entity. And, the, and they wanted to do a dark wood stain and we made the newels and the railings make, make both the barrier rail and, and the grass bubble rail. And it all meets code. And it actually does, I think, and gets you just in to the upper floor, which is an office, and which is a very tight roof like that, gables. Now, one of the last things I'm gonna show you, well, not the last, but one of the things I'm gonna show you is this new house, we're, we're not done yet. But even in house, that the other house had, an, had a really rigorous, I mean, a full budget. This is a smaller house for people that have worked like crazy for three years to make it happen, doing a lot of the things themselves, but also have a wonderful contractor. And we tried to figure out a way to make this, and th this was their word, Belvedere, this top floor, which is essentially gonna be a place uh, as an office or a social place, but it, or a guest bedroom, but it's this top floor in the woods in Maine to again, for to me, bring light down to the middle of the house, but also vent air out. So as you can see, it's not quite there yet. It's further along than this, but these are the best photos I had, where basically we do that same wraparound stair with an open middle with, with windows that go up and it allows all of the, the light and air to flow through the house. You can get a sense of the vertical columns needed to hold it up because they didn't have money for the little steel stringers that, that, that the previous clients had. And I think it makes for a wonderful ascendant uh, reality. And you can get a sense from the inside what it does looking up and you get a look at it from, from going down. And so as you're looking at the, at the thing going up and down, you realize the light's going up and down. And in truth, when the windows are open and all the other parts of the house, the air is going up and down. And so the house is much more integrated into the environment, both in terms of light and in, in terms of, of the natural, uh, the environment. Well, another thing, and this has become, I guess, an obsession of mine, is staircases and bookcases don't just have the word cases, they are really like a marriage made in heaven because there's a lot of things you don't need to look at much, but you do need to access everything in a, in a, in a, in a, in a uh, uh, bookcase. And the fact you go up and down in a stair allows that to happen. And a wonderful stair in Connecticut, we had a little nook and we immediately put books in, in that nook because there it was. And we, again, we use the stair to connect light and air through the three floors. But again, even in a house, which is a, which is a wonderful uh, sense of, of commitment to doing the right thing, the saving money was a good idea. So we use very, very stock stair parts. You see, these are super stock stair parts. And we used a 
solid wall wrapping around the top floor rather than doing uh, an open uh, railing because that costs less to build a wall with stock beadboard on it. And so those things where you can save a little bit here to spend some other money there, that is the value uh, equation that I try to give every client on every part of the house. But stairs are this enormous investment and this enormous, enormously used and visually present part of a house that if you think you have the money to spend making the stairs a special place, that's a, that's a place that I think you'd appreciate spending that money to make it a special place. In a renovation we did in DC, there was an existing stair and that stair went over to the right another foot four. And when we walk, went here and you can get a sense it was just a wall, it was not much, but the people that own this house have a zillion artifacts from their postings in the world for the State Department. So we created, by narrowing the stair, we created, but keeping the existing stair, we made a place to see things as you're walking up and actually store them. And a, a little bit of romance is the top cap of that, that stair thing are harvested from the, uh, actually they were, I think they're Northeast white pine color ties. They're running across the roof that we opened up to make uh, open spaces. So that, that's from the building of the house, that countertop there. Now, a house he did a very long time ago, so long ago, the, the, the stair code was, I think, two or three generations ago. We were able to do this amazing center newel in this open uh, space, and you didn't have to, you didn't have, to uh, have anything graspable at that point in the code, and this all passed code. And we made this, again, swooping stair rail that, that comes down, and on the, one, on the side of it, we made this incredible bookcase that's on two sides, so you get it bookcase up above in the in the loft that's up above to the upper left or the middle upper left and then you get these spaces that are both for pictures and for books both adjustable and fixed shelving and we had a lot of fun making the beadboard make the risers here so the wall is that vertical beadboard and we just took the beadboard and wrapped around the base of the stair and you can get a sense here another another uh, bookcase place where the bookcases mesh with the stair as it rises. But they also opted, by the way, for no, very little money to paint the risers of their treads. It's an incredibly cool uh, design. So that's a, that's a time, again, where you spend a great deal of money someplace, but you add a lot of visual effect by using paint as opposed to those, all those individual vertical pieces of wood. So you can get a sense of how the, these um, um, various shelving systems work. In fact, even for the stairs going to the basement that you see in the lower left, we used actually shelves for essentially a pantry and, and a, and a cl storage closet. We use all these shelves accessed by stairs and, and used actually a low in effect built in that's got that actually had sh uh, bookcases on both sides and, and doubled up on things. Now, one of the last, the last thing I'm gonna show you, or not the last, there's several, but one of the last point I wanna make is that no matter what, stairs are a focal point of the home for use. You got it. If it's the house is more than one story tall, you use the stair. Visually, often the stair is the one place, like the, a jewel, will actually be able to receive all of this visual attention and use and actually not be kind of a, a boring thing. It'll become a, a lovely inspirational thing. Well, typically that means some money. So in a house like this where the stair ends, we had this little turret and we made this the stair rail do this complementary curve. And it is not a stair, but it is a stair. And I think it's it it lives up to the house and is wonderful. But in this house, this little tiny house, 2,200 square feet in the it, right on the water, but very tight, we couldn't have a basement. And we had to have three bedrooms that became quite tiny. And I realized that unless we had one place that was open and light filled, we'd be making a box with windows around the perimeter and kind of a dim, dark, dead exterior because there was plenty of privacy in view to the water, which is the opposite side of this, and really no opportunity for windows around the house because houses were right by them. You could see the paucity of windows that are around there, except at the entry where that just faces a tree. So if you take a look on the inside, what happens is that we, we try to get all the wet stuff to one side or the back side, and then we open everything up to the water, which is, which, is, which is at the bottom of the screen. And you can see that round feature. That's, again, the glass floor that brings the light in from the cupola up above. But in the middle of everything, seen in entry, seen from the kitchen, seen from the living room, is this stair. So the stair sits in this, this lovely open space with operable windows at the very top 
They're mechanically operable so that you can actually crack the windows in the shoulder seasons and never use the air conditioning. And the light from this comes come cascading down through and illuminates the middle of a square floor plan. So we used again, a oak, which I love to use. And we used again, a bandsaw cut um, newels, which are, which are more affordable than other things. And we use a very simple um, handrail that, would, that is basically all graspable rail around the entire piece and use curves in the trim, but also even curves in the risers so that when the light hits at a different angles, you get a sense of the active dynamism. So this sense of openness, there's that glass wall that you saw on the floor plan. This sense of, of again, the, the risers that actually cup and the, the, the shadow cascades in kind of a shape to them, to me actually makes for a sustaining visual beauty, I think, of this super high craft, super technologically involved, super code restricted and defined and, and safety conscious construction that's in every multi-story home. And I think one of the roles that an architect does is, is that a, a good architect will actually, I think, make for a, a scenario where space, light, material, craft, line, form, structure, all the elements of every building become, I think, expressed and distilled and interactive in stairs because they can. And that's one of the reasons I think um, that to me, stairs are this incredible opportunity as long as you make it something which is safe and durable because there are enormous liabilities in stairs. So I, I wanna thank you for giving me the 52 minutes, I got it in under an hour to sort of run you through all these stairs. So I'm ready to answer any questions you have. Thank you. Thanks, Dua, for that great presentation. Uh, we do have a few questions uh, already that I'll uh, show to you in just a minute. Uh, so again, everybody pop some more questions in the Q&A box if you have any. Uh, the first question we had was from John asking about, I believe it was the birch stair you were talking about early on. Um, uh, can you give a sense of the range of cost for a custom Ooh. stair hand done on site? Oh, the, the oak stair. That was really tough. And I will tell you why. Um, I kind of know what the cost was four years ago, but as anybody who's watching this knows, um, four years ago was four years ago. We, we, de everybody desperately wanted to make the stair, but the money that was in the budget for the stair was something, and I am totally making this up, was something like $22,000. I, th I think that's about right. And that's for two runs of stairs, basically. Um, and two really nice runs of stairs and some balcony. And the only way we could do it for that money, and they did, was to make everything in the field because even trying to get prefabricated laminated um, stringers turned out not to be as effective as simply gluing them up themselves. And so, um, that was a tough one because all the pieces and parts, the verticals, the, the braided steel wire, those were all of course stock items, but everything else was handmade. And I asked him, did you do okay? He said, well, you know, I kind of broke even on it, but it is the focal point of the entire project. So given that you broke even there and maybe made some money some other place and it wasn't a building boom, so work was a little bit more precious then, I think it was a real good exchange of values. Okay, great. Um, uh, Jim asked, after seeing, I think, one of the later staircase examples in the presentation, are the rails supposed to be continuous as they wrap around landings? Uh, here's the thing. They don't have to be. I'm going to sit back and raise my feet up here. Um, they do not have to be, but many code officials love it when you do that. And it's not a bad idea for accessibility because the other thing which I should say, and I, I wanted to, uh, and I'll definitely do a seminar on this, is that um, accessibility and comfort is part of any vertical access, whether it's a ramp or a stair. And so if I can make people that need support as they go up and on a stair have a handrail to grasp all the way around, it's just nicer. Sometimes I can't do that. But I do think that 
that wrapping around of things while it's not necessary, given the fact that many code officials wanted to the railing to extend a foot beyond the bottom of a stair, which is, you know, a thing. Um, I think it's a very reasonable thing to do. It's not a huge cost. Okay. Um, so now, you know, on the open, on the open risers, how you, know, you have that metal rod added in a couple yep. of examples. Uh, uh, what, like, how does that cost compared to like a typical solid riser made out of the wood that you would have in that location? Is that a it's 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 a bunch more i would i'm going to totally make it up and say maybe a couple hundred dollars more per riser because it's you're you're doing a slab the other thing which you can do by the way the only two ways i know how to do this and i'm sure people out there are wiser than me either you make the nose deeper either with a slab or with a turn down nose and you make it below four inches so the so if it's going to be a seven and a half inch you make a three or a three and a half inch nose um so you make you make the barrier or you do that rod so i've seen people use glass that sort of terrifies me because i think it you, you'll scratch it and it's it, it it'll be dirty and it's not great and i've even seen actually to some good effect using wire mesh uh so you can get some light coming through it but to me it, it's really a, a case that if you want the maximum light and you want to have standard tread material, um, a way to do it is using that rod. And I use stainless steel because again, it's bomb proof and it doesn't have to be treated and, and you can get stainless steel rod. It's not like it's crazy. Okay. And then, and that, uh, that one sort of barn wood uh, looking staircase that you were talking about later on, yeah. uh, th that one had nice thick slabs and that's how you got away with that, right? Uh, well, in a sense, the, the, uh, the, 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 the barn one, it was completely, they were, they were, they were closed stringers. Uh, and and, and, and they, I think we only had the bottom three that were open, but they were open to something that was less than 30 inches high. So, and there was a floor underneath it. So he said, that's fine. That's a sculpture. You're walking up the sculpture. You can't get in there and die. So that that I don't think those treads necessarily had the four inches that was pretty close. They said that's okay. And it's funny because the truth is, if you say the code is law and you're and it works against you, you should just verify that every dimension and requirement of the code is valid in the condition you have. And um, the code official will will tell you that. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, so Chris asks, uh, he mentioned, I love the one where you've opened up an old stair in a house. Often though the stairs, the basement is right below. How often to an unfinished musty basement. And, yes. uh, how do, have you had to deal with that situation? Well, we're, we're just doing one of these things now in, in, um, in New Jersey. And we were confronted with the fact that the stair again is going to be this super groovy stair sort of set in the middle of the house. So you see it, right? It's, it's a feature, it's, it's what you see. And um, I think the stair will end up not being built because they're, 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 they're doing something else. However, what we realized was since the, this tiny basement was really awful, that if we wanted to make this double stair, stair on top of stair event, the only way to make it palatable was to do an enclosure around the stair away from the stair with a door at the bottom of it. So it becomes almost this art piece that goes below the floor level. And I think that, you know, the cost of that was not insubstantial and that fell victim, I think, to making the project affordable. But that's where stairs get interesting because the one thing I didn't show you and I intentionally did not show you because I had a bunch of them in the last slideshow, we're actually stairs that curved, like, you know, they actually have a curving stair. We, we've done a, many of those, but when you curve a stair, the cost, if not doubles, it's close because the, the, the support has to be curved, which even if it's not the stair manufacturer, it's the walls. But if the stair is a floating stair and it's curved, that's an that's a incredibly tough um, laminated uh, stringer glue up. And in reality, the, all the railings have to be curved you know, curves are one of the great cost factors, three-dimensional curves. They're not cut curves, but actually curves that actually are bent or, for, or formed in a, in a planar curve, plane that forms a curve. That is an enormously costly thing and has great aesthetic rewards, but it's not free. Sure. 
So I see some person in the audience, uh, Eric is raising his hand. I'm gonna actually just go ahead and allow him to talk and see what, see what he has to say. Uh, let's see, Eric, do you have your mic on? Looks close to me. Eric, turn your mic on. All right, well, we'll see. Uh, we we'll wait for him, see if he does log on. But uh, Robert asked, uh, what height from the floor is required for windows on a landing where you don't need to have tempered glass windows? Do you know uh, in Connecticut right now, any window, any window in a stair assembly, any height, tempered. Used to be you get away with 18 inches, but there came a time, I think it was only about four or five years ago, where if you have existing window, you have to use the, the, the film that you can apply to it that makes it into effect safety glass. But we've also done old windows in other places where we run a railing across, the, across it. We've also done it where we, they would be, have to be um, laminated glass or, or, or safety glass or something, but we've actually run stringers or wires across it. So this, this, the window in the stair world has gotten pretty restrictive okay um i don't know i saw eric had his mic on for a second there did you say did you want to say anything eric no yes uh okay. oh, there he is yeah i'm on hi yes i had a question i am in the midst with my wife of building a forever house which means it's for old people yes and very often old people even have trouble with staircases. Oh my gosh, yes. So, so in the middle of our staircase, we have an elevator. Yes. And I was hoping, I, I, I love your, your diction. You seem to be an English major. Because <laughs> I was an English minor in architecture school I and could, only I, one. I could tell the, the, the use of words was so perfect with your presentation that it blew my mind. Well, but I know, I, I I just told you that because it is an obvious truth, and, and I love the first uh, uh, staircase. It blew right. my mind. But anyway, getting back to the old people, like yes. we're almost ninety, and I'm building a new house. Yeah, you sound you sound you sound like you're thirty two years old. Oh, I, need, I feel that way. Thank you so much. But I, I need I need to have your parents. <laughs> uh, well. <laughs> I'll leave that one go. Uh, the uh, the house has a stair a, a staircase wraps around an elevator. And yes. But because the the house we live in now, because it also has floor floors, yes. it has to have a a all these different facilities on each floor. And I yes. said that's stupid. Let's just have the mechanical room in the basement, the laundry in the basement. All these things that very often, and the spa, and et cetera, et cetera and an elevator, we'll yeah, all in the basement, and then have an elevator yep. that connects them all. We do, we do that. And how do you? And we have an architect design this. Good. His name is Mac Rood, and he's from, oh, Mac Rood, say duo says hi. <laughs> and one, of, from, one of the great, one of the great architects in Vermont. And, really, and, and he's. How did you know? And, and um, I actually have been associated with Yes Tomorrow for thirty five well, years. And that is that is what we're dealing with. Yes Tomorrow. Yeah, and, fabulous. And, and yes Tomorrow is the is is the love of my life. But anyway, I, I'm trying to fit the the the, the staircase. With the elevator in the middle. Yep. Yep. And artwork in the surround with the bookcases. Yep. Because that takes the whole problem of having a place for all your books and all your tchotchkas. And you know how to spell tchotchka? Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. It's tchotchke, I think. But yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's crazy. And it was in a cross proposal the other day. And that's the only way I found out. But the Yes Tomorrow has worked with us on this whole thing and with Mac Rude to get the elevator to yeah. work so the staircase surrounds it. Yeah. And without, as you do, you everything's so beautiful, but extremely expensive. Oh yeah. And, and, and I'm glad you, you didn't hide the fact that a lot of this stuff was very expensive to do, especially the three-dimensional curved railings. Oh, I could say, holy, 
you know, that would blow my my railings out of the Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Well, um, we, well, we like did it. We did one of those stairs just recently, and there is one really small elevator that works. And I think it's only you can only do three stops with it. You can't go four. Um, if you email me, if you get my email address, uh -huh. I'll get you that elevator spec for you and Mac. No, we do four. Oh, you do four. You can't use this elevator then. Well, no, no. It's a very small elevator. It, the it's the the elevator pit, uh, which is only ten inches deep. Yeah. 50 by 56. Oh, okay, ours is a little bit smaller, but that's pretty small. Really? That's yeah. Okay. It can only go. It can only go three floors. So I think when, when you get to that fourth floor, you really limit it in the sizing, and it and then that pushes everything out. Um, so it it you know, I'm right with you. It's it's a it's it the idea of combining bookcases, elevator, and stair in one central vertical spine of the house is a terrific way to to condense everything. Well. Once I saw all you, you combined all this stuff, and as far as I was concerned, the only thing you left out that I was looking for, and I saw all the stuff you did, and I said, I hope he puts an elevator in one of them, <laughs> because uh, I eventually, guess. We're, eventually we're all going to need it, and and to have a house that you can stay in your whole life, life, right? Because and and even if you're reasonably young, you still have uh, people staying with you. Uh, and and floors, you don't want to go up four floors all in one shot. Is it gets exhausting? No, and realize that that, 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 house, luggage. that house has that very large tower. We framed out two openings in the floors so that next to the tower, so that basically in their wow. closets. And you, they, they, they're thinking right now after living there for eleven years of essentially putting in the elevator we designed in the shaft we provided for the first three floors. Yes. So, so that, if that you is plan the these things, you could do that. Yep. Yes. In other words, uh, stack your closets so that they're so that if you decide you need an elevator later in life, your closets are all stacked. So you I can agree with that. Here. Well, thanks yeah. a lot. Oh, thank thanks. you. Thank you so much. So add a Mac for me. <laughs> You're the best. I'm gonna I'm gonna see if I can get yes tomorrow to actually uh, uh, glom on to this. <laughs> Uh, well, I will tell you actually I've given four talks in yesterday over the last 35 years so wow. so 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 uh John Connell and I know bad things about each other from a long time ago oh, that's so, so so um lo I would love to go back to yesterday so I was last oh, there a few years ago they so. would love to have you and they'll love to see this presentation it was basically designed for a a builder and an English major at the same time <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thank you very much thank you Thanks, Eric. Uh, we do have one more question from John. Uh, wood, stair, wood stairs are often one of the first things to wear down because yeah. of the traffic going on them. And do you have any tips for that? The only thing I've got for that is the same thing I have for floors, which is that um, a quarter sawn tread with a hardwood will just last longer and better than a flat sawn with a soft wood. So that's number one. Number two, the idea, and this is this sounds crazy, but the idea of having a runner on a stair, some really nice runner, prevents that wear and tear. So whether it's a rug or sizal or something. The last thing is, and we haven't done this much, I just realized I should have shown you the stair that we did. Ah, oh, I'm an idiot. But Using metal sometimes, and the metal's got to have diamondizing or some form of surfacing on it, using metal can work really well to do that. What doesn't work, of course, is anything painted, even anything stained or highly finished, so that so that stairs are the one place that get not only the people forget this, but they not only get the wear and tear of your feet, but you take things upstairs as well. And so if you can think about how am I going to move a mattress, how am I going to move a, a, a sofa and, and use the opening I'm creating to allow for that in a new house, that extra room that you've got to, to go three-dimensionally above means you'll have less damage to the walls and to the stair because stairs are the only way you get from top to bottom. And oftentimes that means damage. Yeah, and that's, that's, a good, that's a good point. Um. All right. Well, I think uh, we're just about out of time, Duo. I uh, as I, I think Eric did did the, the job of thanking you for this wonderful presentation already. 
So, uh, but yeah, we, I really enjoyed it and I'm sure all of our attendees did too. Um, just before we go, I just want to thank Feeney again. Uh, you know, so if anyone out there is planning a stair project of their own, you know, check out, they've got all kinds of uh, different railing systems that could possibly work with one of your projects. So it's feeneyinc.com. Uh, I hope to be on another presentation like this again with you soon, Joe, because I, I enjoy every every one of them. Anytime you want. Thank you so much for having me. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Good night.